Hey, what's up everyone? It is AU5. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make thick, beefy, free range, grass fed, non-GMO, certified organic growls like this with serum. As always, there's a free sample pack with a bunch of growls and wavetables and some impulse responses in the description. If you want to become a master of serum, Hello there. then I highly recommend checking out my serum masterclass with Domination. I teach the ins and outs of serum from the ground up. Every single knob and filter and effect and modulation and parameter inside of Serum, as well as a bunch of advanced techniques that I learned and discovered and use in my own productions. It's got hours of video content just like this tutorial, as well as wavetable packs, preset packs, custom skins, and much more. Check out the Serum Masterclass in the description. All right, let's make some Nice. Some of these techniques that I learned to make this growl were based off of Virtual Riot, Barely Alive, and Niptane. The first part of a growl is the source sound. It's going to sound pretty different than the end result, but what's important about the source sound is that it has the right texture and the right movement to it. Two really good wavetables that work together are the most silly named ones, and that is going to be Dist Dute under Digital, also under Digital, the Dist 8 bit flop. Dist Dute is kind of like a noisy square wave and this 8-bit flop is kind of like a noisy triangle wave. If I just play a note and scrub through these, you can hear that they're just kind of like crusty, dirty, but they still have a really solid tone to them. And that's what's really important. I'm going to be using the disc 8-bit flop table. I'm going to turn the level all the way down. This is going to be used as the FM modulator for the disc dude. Before we continue, I'm going to use LFO 1 as kind of like my main modulator for now. So I can play a note and hear the movement in the wavetable. So essentially, this is just going to be like a lot of sculpting. So I'm going to use LFO 1, put on the wavetable positions to trigger mode. Flip this wavetable position to around here. So as you can see in the spectrum, the low harmonic is pretty solid and stable. And then the higher ones up here, there's kind of like a crispiness to it. They have some more movement, and that's kind of the goal here. You don't want too much movement in the low end. You don't want too little movement in the high end or overall. To get this sounding really organic and tight and thick, it's important that there is movement in the high end more so than there is in the low end. To brighten this up a bit more, I'm going to use FM from B. This is going to technically phase modulate this wavetable from the amplitudes of this wavetable. As I increase this, you'll hear it'll start to get more textured and more complex sounding. It really starts to bring out some of these top end harmonics. I'm going to use LFO 1 to modulate the FM from B amount a little bit. It's important that we turn the random phase knobs all the way down. And this is so every time that we re trigger the note, it's consistent. Otherwise, having a different phase position is really going to change the texture. The next part of this is enabling the filter. I'm going to just enable both of A and B. We're going to use a band 24. I'm going to increase the resonance quite a bit. And it'll get pretty quiet. So I'm going to turn the filter gain up, this fat knob, turn that up. I'm going to use LFO 1 to modulate the cutoff. This is the fundamental vowel movement in the growl. I'm going to bring it to around here, constrain it a bit more. We don't want it too high because it'll start to sound like screechy and screamy as we start processing it. We don't want it too low either because then it'll just be too rumbly and grumbly. So I think around here is a sweet spot. Modulate this wavetable position a bit more. Just get a little bit more movement going on. Let's flip into the effects. This sounds really band passed. There's really no highs or lows. I'm going to enable the compressor and turn on multiband mode. And this is going to boost the lows and the highs a lot more. You can kind of hear the movement in the wavetable texture and the vowel movement is starting to contribute to a more organic sound. The next thing I'm going to do is enable the EQ. I'm going to enable the high pass filter with the LFO on frequency. And this is going to accentuate more of that vowel movement in the mids there. I'm going to set the top band to peak mode, increase the gain, decrease the Q so it's much wider. I'm going to put an LFO on the frequency and I'm going to invert modulate it. And the band pass filter opens, gets higher. This gets slightly lower. It also really helps bring out the top end texture again. To start really getting it sounding 
vocally. I'm gonna enable the phaser. Turn the phase all the way down because that's just the stereo width. I'm gonna turn the feedback to about 50%. So it's not so ringy. I'm gonna turn the depth down. So it's a static phaser. And then using the frequency control, we can modulate that independently with our LFO. Everything is just moving from one LFO at this point. I'm going to inverse modulate this as well. I'm going to set this to the negative value just slightly. There's a sweet spot around here where the peaks and notches of the phaser kind of intersect the peak of the bandpass filter. We start to get some good tone coming out of that. Let me back off the mix just slightly. Then I'm going to enable the filter, go into miscellaneous, and go to band reject. I'm going to increase the resonance. What this is going to do when I modulate the width, it's going to create that yo effect. I'm going to modulate the width and inverse modulate that. I'm going to do the same thing with the cutoff. It's in the down position when the filter is low start to get a little bit more accentuation in the 200 hertz range. So without the phaser and the filter, it sounds like this. With the phaser. And with the filter. Now, I'm going to enable the sub oscillator and set it to direct out, but I'm going to bring the level pretty low. Because the processing that we're going to do later is really going to bring that back out. We don't want to have it too loud because that can kind of overpower the low mid-range harmonics. The next step is what I call the sauce. This is what I think really makes it sound like realistic and organic. It is utilizing a corpus. Corpus is basically a modal resonator. You can emulate this using Serum FX as well, which I'll demonstrate in a moment, but I'm going to use pipe mode. I'm going to make sure that my decay is all the way down. and I'm going to turn the tune up. You're going to hear what kind of effect this introduces. You can hear it kind of creates this tubular effect. In my opinion, it kind of sounds like it makes it throatier. I can turn the frequency down and turn the bandwidth down, hone in on just the mid-range frequencies. I'm going to turn the tune down to around 140. I'm going to throw an OTT on this. You can use the X for OTT. You could also use the OTT in Serum Effects. And that kind of just brings out and flattens out the spectrum a bit more. Another thing you do is enable the LFO and turn the stereo phase down. If you increase the amount a little bit, kind of get some movement and variation. Also, turning the radius down can help eliminate some of the top end harmonics a bit as well. Another effect to use is EQ8. I'm going to set all these bands to the peak filter around this range, around 600 and up. I'm going to start creating peaks here and then notches in between the peaks. Now, if I select all of these, I can decrease the Q and sharpen these up a bit more. Check out how this sounds. Kind of creates that like throaty, buckety sounding. If you have these all selected, you can move them all at once. Get like a nice middle ground. A combination of the corpus and the EQ8 filter, you can really get a lot of different tones. And you can experiment with decreasing or increasing the scale or inverting it to get different types of coloration. If you don't have corpus, it's okay. You can use Serum Effects. Serum Effects is the effects version of Serum. It's clever because in the filter section, you have under flanges, this filter here, which I anticipate is probably pretty rarely used because initially it doesn't seem like it really does anything. It's the comb high, low, six, negative filter. I don't really know the technical name for it, but basically what it is, is it's an inverted comb filter that is band limited. Essentially the same thing that the corpus is doing here. I'll start to increase the resonance. And you start to get a little bit more of that throaty, comby effect. And I can increase the high, low width, which is basically the bandwidth in the corpus, and get some more of that tone. So if I add a little bit of this and then some resonance, maybe back off the mix a little bit, and then also add an LFO to the cutoff, slow it down, enable note latch so the LFO runs, you can get that same kind of effect that you get with the corpus. I'm just going to use Corpus for now. I just wanted to show you that you can do this if you don't have Ableton and you don't have Corpus. I'm going to increase the sub a little bit more. 
And next thing I'm going to do is create a three band split. I already have one called three band crossover and I like to put it after corpus and the EQ. Basically what this does is it splits the spectrum into highs, mids, and lows. What I like to do is add some more texture and width to the top end. And you can do this with grain delay. I'm going to just throw grain delay on the tops. I'm going to decrease the dry wet to about 50%, increase the frequency, and then increase the pitch between like 5 and 10. It sounds good. And that introduces this top end crispy width. If I solo it, that's how it sounds with. That's how it sounds without. Kind of gives it like a nice sputtery effect. I'm gonna go back into Serum and I wanna demonstrate after doing all of this processing, I'm also gonna increase the OTT amount a bit more. By tweaking some of these wavetable positions and phase positions, how drastically of a difference these parameters can make, even just a little bit. So if I mess with the phase, I get totally different types of textures. But like I said before, it's important to kind of have a coherency in the low end and also in the top end too. I want the waveform to be a little bit more saw-like than just noise-like. Decreasing the FM amount also really changes the texture. Too much is really noisy. You can kind of fine-tune that. You can also adjust the amount of modulation on my wavetable positions. Get more or less movement. This sounds pretty coherent to me. Sometimes you can find a sweet spot where the top end is really sizzly. And that's pretty nice. The initial bandpass filter, if you have your range too narrow, you can hear the mids don't really ring out that much. Or if it's too high, it kind of sounds thin and too screamy. So there's a sweet spot to be found there. Also adjusting my phaser frequency. Sometimes having it really low is nice. You get a little bit more of the low mids to ring out. Oh, that sounds really good right there. And same thing with the band reject. To me, that sounds a little too low. And you might want to try this with different notes too. Sometimes different notes will ring out different harmonics and helps inform you what positions to kind of have everything. Sometimes you really don't need much movement at all. So it sounds like without the band reject filter altogether. It's a little too resonant in the 700 range. I think that sounds pretty darn good. If I don't want to be bound to the LFO position, let's say I want to manually control the movement of this growl. If I go into the matrix and hold down Alt and click on one of the sources, as you can see, they're all LFO1, I can batch switch them to any other modulation source. So I'm going to go down to Macro 1, still holding down Alt, and if I let go, they all switch to Macro 1. Now I can use this knob, I can also MIDI map this if I want to. And then have this be my global growl knob. I can configure this in Ableton so I can have control over it. I'm going to create an instrument rack, right click and map Serum's macro one to Ableton's macro. Now I have the ability to control a bunch of other parameters if I want to in Ableton outside of Serum. So I'm going to combine all these together into this instrument rack. For instance, here's something that we can do. Instead of using Corpus's LFO, I can map the tuning to Macro 1. If I adjust the range, let's do 130 to 185. The Corpus can move with the growl, essentially. And I can invert that. I could also do this with EQ8 and map each one of these to basically have these move along with the growl, but that would be really tedious. And not to mention, as you can see with the corpus, once it's mapped, I can't control the tuning knob like I can in Serum, where things that are modulated, I can still move around. Can't do that with Ableton. So here's a cool trick that I discovered, this technique. I'm going to unmap this. Let's say I want to move the corpus and the EQ8 filters simultaneously. Sounds pretty good. This is a trick that I discovered that I like to call the frequency reshifter. I'm going to be using the shifter device, which can be set to frequency shift mode. 
the trick here is to sandwich the effects that I want to shift in between two frequency shifters. Now what I can do is map the course frequency to the same macro. I can set the minimum value. I'm going to set these both to zero and the maximum value. Let's do 400 hertz. So for the max value, what I'm going to do is for the first frequency shifter, I'm going to shift it up 400 hertz. Then it's going to go through the corpus and the EQ8 filter. And then I'm going to shift it back down 400 hertz. This doesn't frequency shift the incoming signal. This only frequency shifts the effects that are between the frequency shifters. And you can use this on many different effects and get some really cool types of sounds with that. Now, in this case, basically what this is doing is frequency shifting up and down just the corpus and the EQ8 filtering, essentially. What's cool about this is I can change the corpus's tune position. And now I can also shift it at the same time. What I want to do here is actually invert the range of these. So when the growl is all the way closed, it's actually shifting the corpus and the EQ8 down. And then when it's open, it shifts it up. You can get this smooth vowel shifting effect as the growl opens and closes. And it sounds like this. If I bypass these shifters as opposed to this this kind of static effect. So that's a really cool way to introduce movement non-destructively. I can also mess with the EQ8 filter positions. I can move these around pretty much wherever I want. <laughs> Sounds pretty good to me. Now to top this all off, I'm going to use another EQ and just do some tone shaping here. In the meantime, I'm going to use an LFO to automatically modulate the macro just so I don't have to keep moving it with my mouse. Now I can really go fine tune these positions. And now at the end, this EQ and add some treble, throw another OTT on at the end. Maybe cut a little bit of the three and a half K range. Boost some more lows, cut out a little bit of this low mid rumble. You also notice this aliasing artifact that's happening the squeaky stuff up here, and that's called zipper noise. That is the effect of parameters being modulated and then having, in this case, OTT's upwards compression really bringing out those artifacts. Anything that's being modulated, it's not actually smooth. It's on a very small scale, stepping. When you compress that a lot, that stepping effect can manifest as audible aliasing artifacts. Sometimes that's sought after. The original Skrillex growl utilizes that as a part of that. If you take the corpus and enable the LFO and then set the filter to really low, you can start to get some of that original squeaky aliasing artifacting from the zipper noise of the corpus. Let me just bring this back to where it was. Sometimes that's a sought after sound, but a quick way to clean that up is to actually take the OTTs and take the upward part of the top band and just bring the ratio into the opposite direction to effectively create upward expansion. It's a noise gate, really. We can top this off with a little bit of overdrive if we want a little bit more crunch and then put a limiter on the end of this and just get it really nice and contained and loud. Sometimes what'll happen when you introduce the shifters, it will mess up the sub. So what you can do is group the whole shifter rack into a group and then put a high pass on the end of it after the last shifter. I'm gonna just set that to 120 Hertz. and then create another chain underneath it, and then put a low pass on that at 120 hertz as well. So basically what that's doing is creating a sub crossover where the sub band is clean. A couple other things that you can do to spice this up a bit is use Serum's hyperdimension effect. If I turn the unison voices all the way up, turn the detune pretty low and the rate up, kind of get this watery movement in the top end. It also introduces a lot of width as well. You are not bound to just one of them. You can also use Serum Effects to do it again and again and again and again if you want, basically stacking these. And you can get some pretty cool watery effects with that. So increasing the rate and decreasing the detune can create this watery movement in the top end. And sometimes that's a really cool sound. 
lastly, what I'm going to do is map Serum's pitch bend. I'm going to set this to plus 12 semitones. I'm going to map this to a macro as well. Set the pitch bend to macro 2. And then we can set the minimum range to 0.5. So basically, this pitch bend will transpose it up an octave. This is what can really give the growl life when it comes to musical expression. Let's draw a note here, and I'll show you what I mean. If I just automate these, something like this, and then use the pitch bend, do stuff like this. You can have fun just drawing different shapes. You can resample those as audio and then use them later in a sampler or whatever. Let's put the erosion before the second hyperdimension. Pretty nasty to me. Here are what some other growls that I made sound like using this technique. And the cool thing about this technique is every time that you do it, it's going to be a little bit different. And all of those little variables, all those little differences in the parameter values and all of the things that you do is going to add up and really drastically change the sound. It's pretty much impossible to get the same sound every single time you do it. That is the pasture-raised, grass-fed, non-GMO, organic growl. This is just one of many different techniques that I teach in my Serum Masterclass. Check out Serum Masterclass class in the description. If you like tutorial content like this, then subscribing might benefit you. Feel free to like this video and if you want, leave a comment and let me know what kind of tutorials you want to see in the future. I'll see you next time. Peace.